and welcome to the Gfinity Arena here in London as we start event two of the F1 Esports Series Pro Championship 2022. We're now three races into the season and some new drivers have emerged to um, shake up the order. However, there's one established name that has definitely announced himself as the leader of the pack. 10 Formula One teams, here we go. 12 rounds, it's time to show us what you've really got. The world's fastest esports drivers in the competition. Just keeps getting better. The lights go out, it's come alive now. Absolutely incredible action. Just look at the speed difference. And we've got passing on the racetrack. It's all going off at once. I like that, I like that. Terry. A second McLaren is heading through and putting pressure on Rona. With the Williams team. Dream getaway. Freddie Rasmussen. A bit of frustration creeping in there. It's time to push. It's time to show us what you've really got. He's fighting his teammate. All eyes to the front of the field. Lucas Blakely wins the opening race of the year. Absolutely incredible action. Pedal to the metal, the first to roll the dice. Sensational. Turning into fireworks out of nowhere. Red Bull have entered the fray. The Mercedes coming closer and closer. The Dutchman is on fire. It's all kicking off on this last lap. Go, Marcel. Go. Lucas Blakely is the winner. We're underway. Great start in that Ferrari. All about the strategy. That's a mighty move. It's over the competitive. Absolutely stacked with talent. These cars are equal. Freddie Rasmussen wins. It's been a masterclass. It's what we love about F1 Esports. It's all coming to the boil now. There you go. Uh, you do not need that uh, collection of highlights to know how exciting this is, uh, because I'm joined by an absolute legend. He's also a part Tour de France cyclist as this, well, uh, Nick Hamilton. Welcome this camera's to a bit too close. Was honest. it too close? Yeah. You were scared, actually. I was getting a bit nervous. <laughs> I'll tell you what, when things get close, I mean, the, how close this uh, season is so far. Um, I'll tell you what, it's a three-way race at the moment. Thomas Ronard, Lucas Blakely, Freddie Rasmussen. It, as I was just saying, so action-packed. You don't need to make that. You just need to see the action. It's been brilliant this year. Yeah, it has so far. And it's great to see Lucas Blakely at the top of the standings doing a fantastic job so far. Um, I mean, it's great to, to be back here, Tom, next to you, mate. Thank you for having me. I'm all in yellow. Hopefully I don't stand out too much. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a fantastic start to the season so far. And let's wait and see what happens today. Uh, has Lucas Blakely been that standout driver for you so far? Uh, definitely. I mean, he, he showed he was consistent last season. He was so close to the title, wasn't he? And to be able to actually go to a new team um, and then be as competitive as he was last season, but actually even better in terms of um, the start that he's had. Mm. Um, it's definitely shown me that he's, you know, definitely one of the top drivers and a real force to be reckoned with. When you look at the standings, he definitely is uh, one of the top drivers. If not the top driver, 65 points so far after three races. Freddie Rasmussen in second place with 44. And then that name, Thomas Ronha, uh, the debutant in Haas, 30 points. Uh, didn't even finish in one of the races. He has been that surprise package. But, but in terms of Lucas, uh, here's a little stat for you, uh, Nick. Uh, more points than Jarno Otmir at the same stage in his two championship winning seasons. So Jarno, at this stage, in his two winning seasons, didn't get as many points as Lucas. What, what do, when you look at that data, what do you take from it? From your data? Yeah, I've just... From I've, your yeah, data that I'm you've given me, I would, <laughs> I, would say, I would say, look, if you, if you spoke to Lucas and said, by the end of event one, you've got two race wins under your belt and a third place, and you're leading the championship by, what, 21 points, mm. he would have probably laughed you out of the building. Um, so he's had, you know, a fantastic start to the season. Um, but it's all about consistency, you know, and... Um, He's, he's, he's not, you know, sort of struggled at all so far, um, but we did see parts of last season where it just sort of got away from him a little bit. Um, so it's all about consistency, and if he can stay consistent, um, then he'll hopefully, you know, go to the title. I, I like Lucas, what a, a great guy he is, um, and it would be great to see him, you know, take the title, we'll see. I like it in any show. Uh, that I've ever been on. When you break down that four forward a little bit, uh, he has been chatting to you, helping you with your esports <laughs> racing as well, hasn't he? So he's even got time to be top of no. the leaderboard, but helping you. And but in in terms of you're an actual driver, Nick. What is Lucas able to do to improve you on your sim racing? Well, well, I was I was just I was just streaming, and I was trying to think of content to stream on my Twitch channel, and. Um, I asked him to, to give me a little bit of uh, or, or some pointers yeah. um, for, for, 
driving. And obviously, um, driving on a, a sim game is a bit different to, to real life racing. And I wanted to know what actually made these drivers tick. How did they um, get so fast? What did they do? What do they do? Um, and he spent, you know, a good, I would say, three or four hours with me. Um, but did he improve your time? Though? He did, yeah, by like half, uh, like a second and a half, nearly two seconds. So, yeah. he, so he's got the skills. He, he does. Yeah, oh. and he's got the he's got the patience as well, which is great. That is key. Uh, however, he hasn't had it all his way uh, this season so far. Freddie Rasmussen has been close behind, getting that win at Silverstone. And um, I mean, look, uh, the, the, if you don't know the history of Freddie Rasmussen, he's already had 12 pole positions, uh, podiums 29. He's won more races than any other F1 esports driver, uh, winning average of 23.4 percent. This guy is the guy just hasn't had a title uh, to, to shout about yet. Yeah, he's, he's the nearly man, isn't he, Freddie Rasmussen? He's always there or thereabouts and just hasn't got the title yet. Um, and yet is a big word. I, I really do think he has it um, within his locker to, to actually get a title. Um, and to see the win that he got at Silverstone, you know, just uh, set a precedent to everybody, you know, not to forget about Freddie and that he's uh, there to pick up the points. Yeah, and uh, he may just do that today. Um, all right, listen, in event one, Nick, uh, we know that Ariana Bravo went down uh, to Marinello, hung out with the Ferrari guys. Uh, she's decided, sent an email, I don't know how she's managed it, mm. but she's there tonight at the Red Bull uh, Sphere with the guys. Uh, hopefully she doesn't refer to Freddie Rasmussen as the nearly man. Uh, Ariana, uh, you are down there at Red Bull. Um, is it been good fun? I mean, it looks incredible behind you. It, can we just show a little bit of this background? It is insane Max Verstappen's championship winning car from last year. I mean, talk about history. When we went to Ferrari, of course, we had all of the history in the museum. Red Bull now clearly competing. Everyone wants a spot on this eSports show, guys. What can we say? But yeah, the atmosphere here is incredible. Really, really fun vibe and also very serious though, like an underlying tone of seriousness. The drivers are heads down and like, haven't been able to chat with them as much um, as we did at Ferrari because they're so focused and, of course, it's paying off. Yeah, paying off in, indeed. We know that the first three races didn't go to plan for Marcel Kiefer. I mean, he did get a second place uh, finish in Imola. However, in terms of that consistency, the team championship is where the money's at. You've noticed how serious it is, is there. Uh, do you see the pressure or have you seen it in the drivers? I haven't seen the pressure in the sense that I feel like they're cracking under pressure or they're showing pressure, but I can tell that they are focused. And when I've spoken to them and when I've spoken to some of the team members, you know, you can tell that they're having lots of discussions, working out how best to approach the rest of the season to maximise, not just from a driver perspective, but as a t from a team perspective as well, like you were saying, because the championship standings for constructors are important too. So, yeah, I can feel the pressure and I can feel that I'm potentially getting in the way again, but that's just what I do, isn't it? It is what you do, but you do it so well, and we really appreciate that. We will catch up with you, you. a little bit later on, Ariana. Uh, great to have you down there at the Red Bull. And I believe there's a sign that says, don't touch the car. So if you could just not do that, uh, that would be ideal. Uh, thank you very much. We'll I catch was going to get in one. I was yeah. going to jump in, but OK. OK, <laughs> please don't do that, Ariana. Uh, we will catch up with Ariana later on. Uh, brilliant to have her down there at Red Bull. Uh, I mentioned him at the start of the show, uh, Nick, and that is Thomas Arana. Uh, what a start to a season for a, for a debutant. Um, he has made Haas have the best start to a season ever. Uh, have you been impressed with his driving? Yeah, very. I mean, I didn't know much about Thomas Ron Haar um, before he came into um, the series. And he, he, he drives like he's been in the series for yonks, for, for donkey's years. Um, he doesn't seem to crack under pressure. He's got so much pace when it comes to qualifying. Yeah, he's made a few um, hiccups when it comes to, to the races, which means that you know, he hasn't got the results that I think he deserved. But I think I, saw, I, I said last time I was here that once he sorts out his race craft and making those decisions, which he will, He's going to be really tough to beat because he's got the he's got the pace to go with it, and once he's got the once he's got the um, racecraft to go with it as well, he's going to be really tough to beat.
underdogs no more. Well, listen, as we just mentioned, Haas have enjoyed the best ever start to an F1 esports season. Last year, R8G Esports team took over the management of Haas and so must take some credit for the upturn in fortunes. And it just so happens we are joined now by R8G owner, ex-F1 driver and current IndyCar racer, Roman Grosjean. Roman, great to have you on the show. Are you well? I'm very good. Thank you very much. It's, it's, I feel like we're back at a sort of a Red Bull gaming area. You've got all uh, of your driving outfits behind, uh, helmets, the whole array there. W where are you right now, Roman? Uh, I'm home. Obviously, it, I'm very proud of that room and I really love it. But compared mm. to Red Bull, I'm missing a couple of cars. Uh, anyway, uh, I think uh, there wouldn't be any, enough room back home. So I'm in Florida, Miami. Uh, I've been... Uh, been enjoying and, and watching those first few races that F1 Esports and they're actually pretty uh, pretty excited for the, the one to come. Yeah, all right, let's get down to business very quickly with my next question then, Roman. Uh, Haas, best start to a season ever. What's the secret? What have you done directly? Uh, tell us everything. I wish it was me, but it's more my, my guys in the in the team in IG Esports. They've been really good. Uh, we were lucky to uh, to find Thomas and to be able to uh, have him with us uh, he has been absolutely extraordinary for the beginning of the season. Um, obviously, that has been a, a big boost for us. Uh, we're trying to grow. Last year, we came over and helped us the best we could, but we didn't really have much experience. DC, I think we prepared really well. Uh, we we oh, nice. got lucky to find uh, Thomas and to have him with, with us uh, and I'm excited. I mean, I'm watching the races and I'm, I'm super stressed. And uh, it's not really good to be a kind of team owner, team manager. It's better to be behind the wheel. I bet, I bet you've got that pressure tonight because you're thinking, look, we go to Austria, Spielberg. Thomas has been a revelation. His qualifying has been phenomenal in the top three uh, drivers this season. Um, depending on how well Thomas does throughout the year and, and of course, the other drivers for Haas, uh, how close are you to maybe having a, a headquarters like we've seen at Red Bull and Ferrari? That's the big question, Roman. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, working on it. Obviously, you know, on something big. And uh, no, I think uh, I'm really. I'm, I've been involved in esports for quite a bit now. Uh, I'm excited to see that uh, F1 is is really doing it great, and the championship is so high level and, and so serious. I mean, if you look at the lap time, it's absolutely, absolutely stunning. So. I'm glad we're on board. I'm glad we are helping and we're part of it. Uh, we're very, you know, happy to be to be just competitive. Uh, Thomas has been really doing really good. Matisse in Imola was good. Uh, Piotr is, is learning. So, you know, we, we started with young drivers. Uh, I think that's that's the way I like to see it, is to give the chance to young drivers and, you, uh, and new drivers to compete. And uh, obviously, Thomas has been doing extremely well. The other guys have been doing pretty pretty good too. Um, obviously, uh, Maddie's didn't have a good quality today, but uh, there's two more races this week, so hopefully he can, uh, can come back. OK, uh, of course, you just mentioned Matthias van Erwin and uh, Pieter Stachelec, uh, the Polish driver. Uh, any words of uh, wisdom uh, going into Austria Spielberg? What do you like about this track, Roman? It is a challenging racetrack. It's, it's very small, but it's very fast. There's some big braking, there's some good overtaking maneuvers, places. Uh, I just hope we've improved our race start. I think that's what we were lacking uh, on the first three events. Every time at the start, we kind of lost position. So hopefully we get a good race start today. And uh, it will be absolutely amazing for Thomas to uh, get a first win. But the podium will be great too. I think that's what I told them. I say, hey guys, you know, we need to make sure we finish the races. In Bahrain, we got taken off and it wasn't our fault. Uh, but I say, you know, we are rather us finishing fourth than trying to go absolutely for third. So they know that we need the points for the Constructor Championship, just like in real life, basically. Um, but also, I know we've got the capacity to, to win races before the end of the championship. Listen, Roman, I could uh, sit and chat for you with you for hours. Uh, so can Nick as well here at the F1 Esports Studio at Gfinity Arena. But listen, we have to say goodbye because we actually have to get to the racing. Roman, an absolute pleasure. Hopefully we'll catch up with you very shortly. Yes, thank you. Have a good race and hopefully we can win that one. <laughs> I like that. Um, right. Uh, thank you very much, Roman. Uh, Nick, uh, we're going to head over here because oh. over in that area, uh, we have two very respected gentlemen, uh, the best in the business when it comes to the commentary, Matt Gallagher and Alex Jakes. Uh, gentlemen, uh, looking forward to event two. Yeah, we're back. It's uh, been the Lucas Blakely show, isn't it? Uh, in the first three races, always on the podium, two victories. But 
you've got so many different storylines. We've just been about Ron Haar. How exciting is he as a, as a prospect? And obviously Austria qualifying earlier today was very, very close. Yeah, I mean, Roman uh, said how excited he would be if they can get their first ever win. But also just making sure they finish the races. Uh, are you expecting any sort of surprises today at Spielberg, Alex? Well, it's all down to the first lap for me because we'll, we'll find out what sort of approach we're going to get from Haas at the front of the field. Do they go? I think they've got to go for the win today because if you have a good first lap, you get the lead. It's easy to manage things at the front sometimes. Uh, if, you, if you get that first lap and you get track position. So, could be a big day for us. Uh, right in this very spot, we were sat on three gorgeous sofas for the quali show that mm. you host, Matt. Um, a lot of action in that quali, wasn't there? Q1, some drivers that we were hoping would start to show a bit of form uh, went out, didn't they? Certainly, yeah. I think Austria especially is, is such a difficult track to get right, not only once, but three times, as it's Q1, Q2 and Q3. Long qualifying, I'm not sure. <laughs> I've never seen that uh, celebration <laughs> from Lucas Blakely before. That was brilliant. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, not, not so many celebrations for Danny Berezne. Yeah. Again, such a shame to see such a decorated F1 eSports driver not be able to get out of Q1. Yoni Tormler as well. He had troubles in Austria a little while back. A few years ago, I think it was, we had a, a bit of analysis of that. It didn't manage it again. And uh, then we head into Q1. Q2, John Evans, what a performance. Debut. Debut on and just missed out on Q3, but puts him in a very good spot to potentially score some points today. Yeah, and uh, when you talk about Berezny, six pole positions, that, that, that form is, has long gone. David Tanitsa, the 2019 Spielberg winner, uh, Alex, but uh, going out in Q2 and Danny Moreno as well. Danny Moreno, who needed to really help his Mercedes teammate, Jana Watmir, but it just wasn't happening for him. Today. It wasn't happening for, for either one of them, and he's got good form around the circuit in the past, so a, a huge surprise to see that he headed out in the second part of qualifying. Um, and then we go to Q3, and uh, I pick Thomas Renard to be uh, your pole uh, sitter, but Freddie Rasmussen showing how good he is. But Thomas Renard, so impressive. Jano in the gravel at one point. Yeah, a mistake at the end for Jano Otmir, which um, meant that he couldn't improve on that final lap where everybody's trying to uh, improve with the, the best track conditions. But Josh Edo, what a performance from him in the Alpha Tauri. Freddie Rasmussen, of course, taking pole position in the end. But it was such a close qualifying session, seven hundredths of a second separating the top seven, the closest we've ever seen. Yeah, in terms of how much of a freakish phenomenon that is, Matt, just put it into perspective for people, because when you look at the starting grid, uh, apart from uh, your first place, Freddie Rasmussen and Thomas Renner, then it goes absolutely bonkers. <laughs> it does, it's a blink of an eye, and you've already seen the top four fly past. It's absolute insanity. Uh, but, you know, you just have to kind of reset if you're seventh and you're half a tenth off. Uh, but you know that you've got the pace to, to potentially battle the, the cars ahead. OK, uh, as we look at that starting grid, Simon Vigang down in fifth, Nicholas Longay, Brendan Lee, Jana Watmir in ninth. Uh, Nick, what does he have to do to, uh, to cement his place and get back into that driver's championship? He needs to find a tenth and a half by the looks of it. Um, <laughs> but it's going to be very, very difficult in the race, that's for sure. But if anyone can do it, Jano can. Uh, three DRS zones in uh, Spielberg, so a bit of a DRS train at times. It's going to be so difficult. A mountain to climb, Alex, for these guys down here to pick up any points. Yeah, they just need the first laps of their, of their lives basically to hope that that happens <coughs> uh we haven't had a big crash the first quarter in f1 esports oh, for a very it. long don't time jinx it. come on don't jinx it don't say and that. i see <laughs> no reason why <laughs> <laughs> but that's what they need if, they're <laughs> if i'm honest uh, where that's they are what I want. Hey, you hey, asked hey, me the question hey, i want nothing more than honesty from you <laughs> alex uh, beautiful stuff matt alex great to have you on board for events here and of course you nick um right uh, as i mentioned ariana is down at red bull what a start for them there must be a good feeling a good energy a good vibe down there ariana yeah, well, I was trying to keep it discreet when we spoke a few moments ago because I didn't want to spoil it. No spoilers just yet. But of course, what a place to be when Freddie gets pole position. Atmosphere is fantastic. And I caught up with him just after qualifying to hear how he was feeling. Let's take a look at what he had to say. Uh, I think it's all about turn one. Uh, if you have a good turn one, it's a lot easier for, to nail the lap. And luckily I had that. And then the hairpins were pretty good. And then I took it really easy in last sector, but it was still enough. And looking ahead to the race this evening, how are you feeling about that? Do you feel confident now that you've been out in qualifying and seen the potential of the car? Uh, yeah, I think we're pretty confident. Um, our race pace has been pretty good the whole season, also the previous years, so should be good. Fantastic. Well, we'll be cheering you on from outside here. Thank you so much, Freddie. 
So, as I said, it seems like there's a confidence, but you may have noticed it's a bit of a quiet confidence, I would say. Like, not not screaming from the rooftops that he's got pole, but maybe that's because he's waiting to seal the deal with the race win today. Stay tuned. We'll be speaking to them after the race and we'll be able to get their reaction then as well. Incredible stuff. Thank you very much, Aaron. And you deserve an award for getting the most out of uh, Freddie Rasmussen. I think we've ever, ever heard. He, he's a man of few words. He delivers on the track. That's where he does all of his talking. But phenomenal there. Do you agree with Freddie? It's all down to turn one. I mean, there's nine other turns. Well, one of them actually is <laughs> not really a turn, is it? Turn two is, yeah, is a nothing corner. Yeah. But, uh, look, I mean, he, I think t turn one, as Alex said, you know, it could be a big crash there. Uh, so if he gets out of turn one for the race as well, uh, and then obviously down towards the hairpin, there's going to be... We saw, I think, Marcel Kiefer make a mistake uh, last year into that corner. So as long as he gets out of, the, out of those corners unscathed in the race, he can sort of settle himself down. OK, Alex, I've got a little uh, stat for you here. Freddie sure. Rasmussen, last mm. three races at Spielberg in the F1 eSports series, he's finished second. Mm. Is he going to uh, potentially finish on first? I think if he's leading at the end of lap one, I think today might be the day. OK, he's going to break, but, he's going to break that Who trend. knows? And I love That's why we're here. Uh, Nick, uh, Freddie <laughs> Rasmussen, uh, incredible driver. Uh, before we go to a break, uh, what does he need to do to make sure uh, he takes home a full maximum 25 points today? I mean, it was, it was crazy to hear that he took the final sector easy. Yeah. So if he took it easy, he's got more pace in him or within him. So um, I think if he takes it easy, he's going to win. Bear in um, mind that easy was 700 <laughs> slower than the purple last sector, so... Mm. That's Interesting. Right. We'll have to wait and see, Tom. Yes, we will. I'll tell you what we'll do. You guys get ready in the commentary area. Nick, we'll go and take a seat at the desk. When we come back after the break, we'll have all the action of event two. The first race, that is. Ah, there we go. There's That's the traction there. control. You, you turn it off, no? I should have been a rally driver. Oh, yeah? <laughs> no. Nah. <laughs> but I like it, actually. Austria in reverse. Yep. Any tricks I should know in reverse? Just crash. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, any tricks on the driving side, like crash. in the simulator? Yeah, just right. crash. Yeah. <laughs> Eighth gear is the fastest, even at 60 kilometers an hour. Let me see. I'm not even joking. That's the best way to go. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of I remember you guys short shift a lot, no? Yeah. I mean. Well, that's not a bad start to a lap. Yeah, I mean, only eight seconds off the pace. I, I think we should have a bet. If you can take turn one flat or not. In reverse. It understeers a lot, no? Yeah, yeah, but send it. You know Nick can understeer, just bounce off the wall. <laughs> ah, there we go. There's That's the traction control. You you turn it off, no? Yeah, but you don't I need want traction. a traction control. Ah, you don't no. need traction control. The, the what uh, gear I should be on the exits? Five. Like fourth? Ah, that's too much knowledge. We don't need to give you that. <laughs> Well, to be honest, but yeah, just don't, don't accelerate with less than fourth gear. I mean, third is still fine. But... Then sometimes I see you guys doing like very weird lines on the street. That's for distance. Yeah, because um, we the game doesn't really simulate how do I say uh, friction properly. So like torsion, yeah. Uh, go for the shortest distance rather okay. than what's better for KPH. Let's say. It's quite sensitive the um, the throttle. Huh? You yeah. need to be in a very high gear. I mean, there's not Whoa. that much travel on the throttle, though, is there? To be honest. That's why you are racing with shoes. Usually we, we don't use, we just go with socks, but most sensitive. What a corner. I, I'll give you 100 euros if you take this next right hand to flat. Take it flat, I'll okay. give you 100 euros. And you don't go off. <laughs> ah, there we go. You, Nearly. You I should have been a rally driver. Oh, yeah? <laughs> no. <laughs> nah, right. But I like it, actually. And rally games, are, are they any good? Mm, I mean, I think there are some good ones, but yeah? it's not really my interest, but... I mean, there's a few rally esports out there. I think one you could win a car. The curbs are really slippery in the game, no? Oh, yeah. yeah. All the exit curbs you need to be careful with, no? Uh, most of them we can use, to be honest. Um, but it's just a way of going about the throttle. So on the telemetry, we basically go to 50% throttle and modulate from there. Um, but it's also setup dependent because you're not on, let's say, the best setup on the game. Okay. So once you put the best setup on the game, then you can start to use the curves a lot more with the ride height and the anti-roll bars. And it really makes a big difference in this way. Right, 100 euros, flat out? Mm, not anymore. Ah, uh, you don't want to take the... Nah, come on. This is actually a very nice car. so far. There, there, but why? It's been a very nice corner. Right, Perfect 360. so with the 360, we're going to have to call it there. Thank you for driving around Austria backwards. It's been a... And spinning a, seven times. Yeah, I mean, it's been a life experience for me. I'm, I'm never going to forget this.
then, welcome back to the F1 Esports Series Pro Championship 2022. I'm Tom Deacon. This is Nick Hamilton next to me. We are about to get going uh, at the Spielberg uh, race, the Grand Prix in Austria. Um, Nick, I want to get your final thoughts before that. Did anyone stand out for you in quali that, that sort of impressed you? Uh, definitely. Uh, Josh Edo, I think, uh, did a fantastic job. I mean, we've seen um, his potential. We saw it last year at Imola, which unfortunately he, he didn't win. He was so close to winning. Um, but all of a sudden just you know, popped in an amazing lap, which put him P3. Um, so I would definitely say um, that was performance of qualifying for me. Um, and let's see if he can uh, translate that into a decent result for the race. Yeah, I mean, last season he had that pole in Imola and it all went a little bit wrong for him. It was just unfortunate, like you mentioned about Thomas Rona, that race craft, when you're there, you can qualify, you've got the speed. Can you use all of it uh, to get yourself that point? So what's he going to need to do today then? He's starting in third on the grid. Uh, does he need to just hold that composure, not let it get to him that he's got Simon Weigang behind, he's got the likes of Lucas Blakely wanting to get up in the podium spot? Yeah, I mean... Um... Last year, he, he actually was leading the whole race until the last lap. Um, so it's just like he, he cracked under pressure just at the last lap. But he did everything else perfect. Mm. Um, so he's been in this position before. Um, you know, he started on the front row before. So he started on, so now he's starting on the second row. Um, so, you know, it's going to be a, an interesting race for him. I don't think he's got anything to lose. Uh, he's just got to relax and sort of get in the groove, find the groove. And if he can uh, pick up a couple of points and uh, a couple of spaces, you know, he could end up winning the race. You never know. Just send it. That's what we're saying. Uh, best of luck to all of the drivers. It's nearly time to go. Enjoy our commentators, Matt Gallagher and Alex Jakes. But first, before I go to them, let's get excited for the Austrian Grand Prix. It's the Austrian Grand Prix here at the Red Bull Ring. Bagging Will, Sergio Perez. Watford. They've touched again. Lando Norris moves back up into the podium places. They came, they saw, he conquered. Max Verstappen wins. Incredible, guys. <laughs> It is time for the fourth race of the F1 Esports year, and it is a track, Matt Gallagher, which really provides a stern test because there are only 10 turns, but they are all loaded with difficulties. The margins are fine, the margins are tight, and to succeed here, you've got to be really talented. You do indeed, and I've just heard in my ear, it's raining. What? I know. Hopefully I've well, not just heard that point randomly. Num point number one, why have only you heard that? I know. Point Right, now I've heard it. It's definitely <laughs> raining. Uh, here it is, the circuit, so DRS might not be in use, uh, but that completely changes the complexion of the race. The 10 turns, turn two doesn't exist. We'll tick that one off. But uh, it is effectively quite a distilled challenge into a few corners here, but it just puts the pressure on getting those corners right. And then I add in the weather. Yeah, I think the weather will do this race probably a bit of good. I think we've seen some uh, difficult DRS strains uh, in the past. Uh, I think we've got the front six all in different teams and here we go there's your first look the rain is coming down and it looks like it's coming down pretty heavily indeed so what are we going to see the drivers <laughs> do because we've seen probably the most epic f1 esports race ever yep. around china where yana watmir went for a different strategy yeah are we going to see the same today is there going to be a few drivers maybe who have qualified out of place, deciding to roll the dice and go for something different. They'll have the information. They'll know what the weather's kind of looking like, but you just don't know. So it is dynamic. As we've seen before in the past, conditions can pl completely change. You can get something completely different all the way through. As you pointed out, uh, the last time we had mixed conditions like this, a gamble for a driver who was in real trouble, bailed him out that day, took him on the way to the title, Jano Otmir in a similar sort of position today. If he'd had a dry race, zero chance. Now, the scope for action just broadens further. It does indeed. Uh, I don't think the wet tyres are as bad in this game as they are potentially that we saw in real life at Japan. Um, I think they are a viable tyre uh, on this uh, particular game. Uh, but it really does depend on how bad the track conditions are. Well, that is the look of intensity. All the hours of preparation put in. Lucas Blakely on to Marcel Kiefer, another driver who will be happy to hear that the rain has arrived. If you're outside the top 10, this is dreamland. If you, 
like Joshua Duo had done so well to, to, to get into that, that position on the grid. You wanted a dry race. You wanted to try and consolidate your position. This is going to be fascinating because it blows it wide open. The five red lights are on in Austria. And we go racing for the fourth time this year in F1 Esports. Rasmussen versus Ronald off the line. And Freddie Rasmussen's experience absolutely paying off there. Very, very tight on the way through. Vigang is off the road in the background in the green. Aston Martin as they snake their way through. Intermediate tyres for the first two, for the first three by the looks of things. And Ronald thinking about it. Ronald thinking about it very nearly shaping to the inside. And he's off. The race leader's off. He's outbraked himself. And as he rejoins, this could be an opportunity for Haas to take the lead. He's pulling alongside. We've got drama on the opening lap. And Thomas Ronhard has the inside line. Thomas Ronhard trying to win his first esports race today in the F1 Pro Championship has the lead. And Freddie Rasmussen having a look at him again. They're going to go side by side. Surely they're not going to be able to stay there. No, Ron Hart does take the lead. What a great move from the Haas driver. Took advantage of Freddie Rasmussen's mistake into turn number three. And Nicholas Longgate has just passed Simon Vigang as well. But the changeable conditions, Alex, they don't practice as much for these conditions. I know that they're aliens and they're playing this 8, 10, 12 hours a day. But they don't want wet conditions. They want the dry. Ron Hart taking the lead from Freddy Rasmussen, the pole position holder, down to second place. Then it's Edu in third. Barry Borman is fourth, gaining positions on the opening lap. Lucas Blakely, you can see, has gained one. So has Longay Simon Vigang being wide at turn number one on the opening lap. Cost him. They're fighting all the way through the field. That is Danny Beresne, Beresne going wheel to wheel in the background as they fight their way up the hill. And we're now looking at Blakely trying to put the pressure on in the middle of the pack as we go back to the race for the lead. This is where Freddie Rasmussen lost it. One lap ago, this is where he's trying to retake it. Defensive move thrown. Fantastic action as they all fight on the intermediate tyres. Now the pressure goes on the young Dutch driver to pick his braking spot. And still they go wheel to wheel again. Fine margins between the rear tyres and the front wing as the Red Bull driver tries to retake the lead. And he's forcing another defensive shape. He's risking it over the kerbs on the white line. The treacherous part of the racetrack, but he can't find a way back through. And it's single file through here. He'd need a mistake to retake the lead. What a brilliant start to this race I am absolutely transfixed on this Freddie Rasmussen looking to come back at Ron Haar now of course we're not going to get any use of DRS we'll keep an eye on the weather as well Championship leader, got, Ni uh, got Nicholas Longay, Lucas Blakely up to P5. So a difficult qualifying session by the standards of his lofty standards, you have to say, of the season so far. And all the while these two keep on battling with that wide line into turn one. And you heard what Freddie Rasmussen said to Ariana before the start of the broadcast. If you get it right through turn one, you set up the rest of the lap. The exit there is going to be so important. A little bit of a lock up there as they both struggling. They're all struggling to measure the breaking point into three. And this is the beauty of these changeable conditions. They are making mistakes. That These drivers that we don't ever see run wide or lock up or Freddie Rasmussen going off on the first lap. Do we ever see that in no. dry conditions? No. Throw in a bit of wet conditions, intermediate tyres on the car, and we have got an absolute race on our hands. Can Thomas Ronha win his first ever race for Haas? We spoke to Roman Grosjean in the pre-show. <laughs> he was hoping for it. He's praying for it right now, and he is probably going to be quite stressed as well, as he said, uh, watching these races. He's probably going to be texting Gunter Steiner if he's <laughs> part of the team setup that take Haas to a win at the end of this one, if they can take their first win in the championship for years. They had the millstone of Tom Deacon's support round their neck, but now things have changed and they have a real opportunity to take the win. But look at the margin there. Five tenths of a second for the race lead. And Josh Edo, he switched teams as we snake through the first turn on board with our two-time champion, reigning champion from last year as well, Jano Otmer looking to restart his championship campaign. Had a tough time in Imola, finished out of the points. He was battling for victory in Bahrain. It was normal service, but he's trying to re-establish himself. But it's the man in P3 in the nominally junior team of AlphaTauri attacking the Red Bull. A reminder for you, if you're new to F1 Esports, these are all equal cars, it's equal machinery, and these conditions are great leveller because it is no longer about replicating the inch-perfect laps that they practice hour after hour after hour in the dry. It's instinct, it's feel, it's ability, and it's delivering under the pressure of the moment. And Josh Edo, who had that heartbreaking loss of a chance of victory, at the very least, a podium 
at Imola last year in the championship when he was racing for McLaren. Shadow looking for that trip to the rostrum, looking, dreaming of getting past the serious contender, the man who has been so good all the way through in F1 Esports, Freddie Rasmussen. Ron has settled down a little bit, has to be said. He's uh, had a few pretty strong laps, and Freddie Rasmussen will maybe be looking in his mirrors more than looking ahead of him at this stage, although Josh Edu has just fallen around six tenths behind now. The two McLaren shadows cannot be discounted either. Barry Buramand and Lucas Blakely, of course, as you can see there, Blakely up two. Matthias van Erven up seven. <laughs> Take a bow. How, how that's, he that? that's incredible. I'd love to see an onboard of his start uh, at some point, but uh, what a start for, for Haas. Not only leading the race, but van Erven on the uh, the outer edges of potentially scoring some points here. On the other side of the coin, David Tanitza down five, down in 19th position. That is the champion of F1 Esports from 2019 in 19th position. Uh, he's got a race winner directly in front of him, but things not going to plan. We're on board with Jano Otmir because he's looking closest to make the move. Simon Weigang getting shuffled back. You can see down a couple of places at the start. First Longgate and then Lucas Blakely got through. Lucas Blakely then got ahead of Nicholas Longgate in the Alfa Romeo. And they're fighting the cars all the way through here. Corrections when you would never normally see. Brushing the grass out of turn 10. Freddy Rasmussen as he tries to stay with Thomas Ronhar, the rookie sensation who has roared on the scene, roared to the lead of the race. We wondered what sort of first lap we'd get. He showed the intent, he forced the error, he got the lead, and now he is challenging Freddy Rasmussen to stay with him as he tries to win his first F1 Esports Pro Championship race. OK, so I want to open up a scenario here, which we saw, I think it was last year, uh, with Danny Moreno and Jarno Ockmere. Uh, in changeable conditions last year as well, did we not, Alex Jakes? Um, but uh, the thing is, I know we've been speaking about the quality show, and oh, you want to have your teammate with you. The problem is, there will be an optimum time to pit, and we have got two McLaren shadows lying astern. And just remember how much Danny Moreno was affected last time out, uh, last year around here, because he dropped well out of contention after being right at the front with Jarno Watmir. So that's something to take into account as well, because that is Lucas Blakely, the championship leader. An absolutely imperative that Blakely takes that decision out of the hands, really, of McLaren, because at the moment, McLaren Shadow have a call to make for the issue that you've just highlighted there, Matt. But if Blakely gets ahead, the lead car, the championship leader, there's no question that they would give him the strategic call as well. So can he remove that problem? Luxury problem to have when your driver's in the lead of the championship. But uh, top five finish again for Lucas Blakely, having the season of his life so far. Our championship leader on 65 going into this one ahead of Freddie Rasmussen, who's 20 points back on for another podium. It would be Freddie Rasmussen's third podium in a row this year, and that's a good exit for our reigning champion. And Jano Otmir, closer all the time, would have been desperate for the DRS that he would get in the dry, not available in the wet, the widest possible line into four. And now that we're into a rhythm, we are still seeing them dance on the edge of the grip here, but he's not able to force Feigang into even a defensive shape into one of two key overtaking opportunities around this racetrack. One is turn three, the other turn. You might be thinking, oh, DRS is uh, active. It's uh, such a shame, but the thing is, they're usually in the DRS train, so it doesn't really matter yeah. the fact that we don't have DRS to, to help overtake. But I think Jano's definitely looking like the, uh, the fastest driver in this train that's stuck behind Simon Weigang at this particular moment. But the problem is, he doesn't want to send one to the inside and potentially lose an end plate and also time to the six cars ahead of them, because Jano is not setting his sights just for P7. He's setting it for, for much further ahead, I am sure, as he now activates, you can see, 62% of his battery left. Simon Weigang has definitely activated a bit more to give himself a bit more breathing space to the Mercedes. And there's Lucas Blake. This is where the extension of the races for this year really throws out the options for me, because we're doing 36 laps today. That is far higher a lap count than we would normally run in previous iterations of F1 Esports. We go on board with the championship leader, up a couple of places, trying to make it three at the expense of his rapid teammate, fantastic qualifier, ahead of him on the grid, ahead of him in the race. And you can see he's not too far away as well. So we check in with him, live pictures of him working the wheel, bottom left of your pitch. And we've seen so much emotion from him so far this year. But and first time we've seen him not at his home. Yes, right? totally this different uh, setup for him. And McLaren Shadow Arena. 
that's always going to be different. That's always going to be getting used to a to a different venue. Very close to his teammate out of the final. He'll be uh, definitely asking, can I, can we swap? Or Amanda, you, you need to you'll probably be sending the hurry up call at some point uh, because Lucas Blakely all over the back of him. Barry Burman not exactly troubling Josh Idu at the moment. Lucas Blakely currently fifth. How are they going to manage this? And McLaren Shallow going to think, right, maybe we... Oh, here we go, Alvaro Caraton trying to look up the inside, but nothing doing on Van Erven ahead. But to be fair, do they have to swap McLaren Shadow, the two McLaren Shadow drivers, or do they just give Lucas Blakely the preferential treatment anyway as these two continue to fight? Ooh, that's a late shut of the door for a man who's gained seven places and doesn't want to lose one. Alvaro Caraton almost nudging him through the corner. Get on with it. If you're going to close the door like that. Oh, that's brave. Send one to the inside. <laughs> How about that? Must have been an error for Matthias van Erven, who drops down, still having a good run. But even so, or Alvaro Caraton, if it wasn't an error, that is bold, brilliant, and a little bit bonkers because you just do not see many traditional passes there. Yeah, that, that must have been an error from Van Erven. There's no way that the way that he was going was the racing line, as we have our first pitter, Philip Prejneda. OK, so we heard, we received word that the track is now uh, in a different situation. The rain has stopped. So if you're Philip Prejneda and things were not going to plan, let's be honest, they were not, take the gamble, try and live with the uh, try and live with the conditions out there. So what's he going to go for? He's surely, surely not in these conditions. He's not going to gamble for slick tyres. I think he might, Alex. You know, I well, think he might. We'll check in. It, that would be outrageous as a gamble because the track still, as you can see, very wet on the racing line. This is another look. <laughs> that is sensational from Alvaro Caraton. So, Philip Prisnader. We'll keep an eye on his intervals. As, uh, he's currently not yet. He's definitely out on drives. He's just lost it. Yeah, there you tires. go. Hard tires. So not only has he got the, the damp conditions right now, but he's on hard tyres, which are the worst for tyre yeah. warm-up on this F122 and that's game. Absolutely a feature. They absolutely have to contend with that, just like the real thing. And uh, if you were watching George Russell try to get some heat into the tyres in Singapore. That's a similar situation that Philip Prejnader, he's, he's totally gambled, he's nothing to lose, he's decided to go for it, it looked too early, and as you see the gap go from 19 seconds to 20, so anyone, 22, 23, now 24 seconds off the back, it is not a gamble that's working as he tries to wrestle his car around the 10 turns of the Red Bull ring. Yeah, I think they were hoping for a, a heat wave to strike the track. Uh, In Austria. The second, the second There's uh, a reason it's so <laughs> green around this racetrack. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, still time being lost, but it'll be crucial data for the rest of the teams. Definitely, uh, Philip Reginator, the minute he starts catching Shanaka Clay, you best believe we're going to have a flurry of pit stops. And uh, I imagine one of them will be Jano Watmir, although he does love an alternate strategy as uh, he wrestles the car slightly uh, through that left-hander. Philip Reginator still losing time, although not as much at the moment, but take into account his tyres will be getting some kind of temperature now. As uh, we now look at Danny Berezne, who is... Uh, Trying to make a move on David Tanitza. This is uh, a battle that I'm not expecting to be seeing. Tanitza and Berezne for 17th as Van Erven crucially gets a three second time penalty. Prejneda still losing time out there. The pace is not that far off. It's, it's a pretty decent pace considering that these are mixed conditions. So I wonder if the crossover is too far away now. Uh, Van Erven's penalty there, that he just covered off. Uh, we're checking with Danny Berezne, uh, multiple race winner. Fighting with David Tanitza and Alvaro Caraton has uh, improved past another car. So he's loving this no man's land between not full wet and, and no dry line. That's another position gained for Alvaro Caraton. Now past John Evans making his debut today for the Aston Martin team. I've got a question, Presnader's decision there. To be honest, that is so early. He's lost 13 seconds since he came out the pits. Um, but he's providing us with some great insight uh, because the minute that starts going down, I'm going to start shouting. Uh, and I think <laughs> I'm sure a lot of the, uh, the team members are going to be doing the same thing as well. His sector times are going to be watched like a hawk from the rest of the field. He's not losing too much time, but it's probably about a, se a tenth of a second every time that updates, so it's still enough. OK, fastest laps, we're in the 111. That's, so that's only eight seconds off yeah. qualifying. So I, 
We're not getting a lot of spray on track at the moment. I don't think we're far away here. Watch that 33 second gap, because if, if it stabilizes at any point, that's the moment. It's go time. It is jump into action in the pit lane. And now we're in this strange situation where they're still having, you know, best esports drivers in the world up against each other on this game, F122, and looking for the first opportunity to jump in. And this is where Ron Hart must be heart in mouth because he's got to take the conservative decision. If he goes early and gets it wrong, he's thrown away the race lead. Freddy Rasmussen, so solid in the dry, so solid in these conditions, he's gonna punish any mistake if it's a lap too early, if it's a lap too late. So he is in a really tough spot. If you're Josh, you do here. Do you, do you go early? And those who, like Nicholas Longgate, Nicholas Longgate who, you know, sometimes, you look down the order and you go, no way is a driver of that caliber in this position. Oh, not a minute, Van Irvin, who gained earlier on. He was seven places up. He is now going to test out track conditions for his teammate. He is coming in out of the points and he is gambling. He's not the only one. She Bosch as well. David Tanitza. Is this the moment to get rid of your intermediate tires and put on the slicks? We're about to find out. They're going to struggle, as we saw with Prejnader, when they come out the pits. The tyre warm-up is going to be very difficult. Uh, obviously, uh, worth mentioning as well that uh, Rasmussen is pushing. He is yeah. pushing Ron yeah. now, and Ido is now a second, almost, behind Rasmussen. So I believe we have been... There's been a few calls. Uh, yeah, you can see Philip Prejnader as well, obviously, catching Tanitza, but Tanitza is on drive. This is in-lap uh, pace, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it looks Freddy like Rasmussen. all on push laps now. So having gone into a rhythm, are waiting to find out. There's no more spray anymore from the back of the Haas, which is leading the race in F1 Esports, trying to take the first team victory in the history of F1 Esports. And then what does our race leader do? Surely he peels in, he does as well. Surely they're all gonna peel in. Who goes round again? Who comes into the pits? The spray has faded, it has stopped raining. Barry Burrowman is sent round, exactly the dilemma for McLaren played out. Everyone else who can pit will pit. Very surprised they've left him out for this lap. I would have imagined maybe the lap before, but then I guess the benefit of hindsight is very difficult to judge, but we'll have to watch this because I think Burrowman's gonna lose a hell of a lot of time now. So let's find out, Ron Hart kept track position over his great rival for the victory, Freddie Rasmussen. Oh, Moreno's had to do it again. Yeah, and Moreno, just like this circuit one year ago, finds himself, and look, they're warming it up. So have they gone to the same compound attire? That's the next question. Are they both on the hards? It looks like they, yeah, they Mediums are. for Longay. Mediums for Longay is a gamble. It's a serious gamble. Could pay off for him. Certainly in the warm-up phase, will definitely pay off for him. Philip Schneider just done a 109, fastest lap of the race, sizably. He's gambled just too bold, just too early. And now we go on board with Lucas Blakely, who's lost a position to Nicholas Longay. He's on the hard tire. Longay finding himself on the mediums, quicker to warm up and a change for track position, losing a place, our championship leader. So here we go, they're in the next phase of this race, and Josh Edu is just about trying to hold on to DRS when that finally gets activated. Oh, as if by magic. There it is, <laughs> DRS enabled. Do not worry at home. This Matt is Gallagher not does not have a direct line to race control. <laughs> My goodness, imagine that. <laughs> that was, yeah, that would be dangerous. Uh, but Ron Hart and Freddie Rasmussen looking like they may well make this a two-horse race unless Josh yeah. Edu can get on with it. He has Mass his need to be massive fair. Massive couple of laps now for Josh. The Welshman trying to stay there. Uh, Nicholas Longe coming under big pressure. And Barry Burrowmond, Barry Burrowmond uh, showing on the screen. Just want to check that with my own eyes. It was Barry Burrowmond having been sent round. Tire warm up though. Yeah, yeah he'll be ah, he, got he got track position, but there is his teammate getting through. That's still a great effort to go one lap longer and be in contention. It's crucial for him now to keep Jano Watme behind because he's going to struggle so much on this lap. So you can see Jano Watme, look at the gap, it's one tenth of a second. The champion is pushing him round at the moment. Can Barry Burrowman hold on to it? He can through here, it's single file. That's the thing, you can make a move into six. After that, well, it's got to be super brave. He's going to try it into the Jochen Rink curve and he can't. Tire warm up getting better with every corner that he runs. So Barry Burrowman doing really well 
to stay a factor, having done another extra tour of the circuit, the 4.3 kilometer circuit. Fastest driver on track is Lucas Blakely, our championship leader. But Ron Hart now finds himself five tenths of a second in the lead of the race. DRS is now enabled, and look, Barry Boromund, He's got track position, but not for much longer because sending it to the inside and barging his rival out of the way. Have a look at the exit curb, says Jano Otmir up to P6. These two have so much previous from league racing. I'm glad they came out of that unscathed. Whoa! Brendan Lee! That is aggressive from Brendan Lee. He was shown the defensive shape. He wasn't interested in backing off. He's up to seventh place and he's on the medium tyres as well. So you can see he's run out of ERS as Barry Burrowman. You can see that flashing light on the back of his car it means he is uh, really lacking some energy. And I think that's just left him as a sitting duck down the straight. We thought he might have been able to hold on to that. He was trying ever so desperately uh, to stay in that train and using his energy as part of his, um, or try to, to try and improve his pace. Uh, but unfortunately for him, down to eighth, as we now take a look at Nicholas Longay, who has thrust himself into this race. How are the mediums going to work? There's another 18 laps to go. He's going to have to treat them with uh, quite a bit of kindness, I would say. He's going to worry about that later on, I would imagine. He's going on the charge. He's not the only one. That's for the race lead. Freddy Rasmussen, can he slow it down? At the corner where he lost it at the start, he's got back past the Haas. He's made the DRS work. Crucial metres in the contest now. Can Thomas Ronhart come back? He shakes to the inside. He can't go through. He can't respond. And the Red Bull driver, who started from pole, retakes the lead. He lost the lead in the wet. He reclaims it in the dry. And these are now vital corners if the Haas driver is going to stay in contention. He must stay within a second to keep that DRS. Here we can take a look at uh, what it looked like from Josh Edo's perspective. And there you go. When we were riding on board with Ron Hart in that second phase, the second DRS zone, he didn't have his uh, battery deployed, so he let that go. He could have attacked Rasmussen a lot harder uh, into that next braking zone, but he did not deploy his overtake button. So this battle is not over by any stretch. How wonderful to have a new contender at the front of the field, confident enough to let him go for the time being. We rejoin battle one lap later. Wonderful part of the racetrack. We go to the top of the hill. Let's see if he deploys that battery. You can see the yellow line on the steering wheel. And he remains there. Does he dive to the inside? Oh, he would have been tempted to do a Charles Leclerc impression there. But he couldn't at this moment. Does he want to take the lead at this moment? They're both on the same compound of tyre. Can Nicholas Longay get past the Alpha Tauri driver of Josh Edu ahead. He's got close, but he's really got Lucas Blakely for company as well. He does indeed. Unfortunately for Simon Weigang, picked up a three-second time penalty, most likely for track limits. So that will put him out of the top ten, unfortunately, for the Aston Martin driver. Thomas Ronha, though. He was confident enough to let him go. All right, Freddie, you want to lead from the front? That's fine. Freddie maybe want to do exactly what he did in Silverstone and just led and drove away from Ron Hart in the final lap. And uh, maybe wants to do that again. Here's Nicholas Longay trying oh. to use these mediums. Look at this. Great exit off the corner. Battle for third. Battle for the lead to the inside. It's going to change again. It's the race of the season. It's unfolding in front of your eyes. Thomas Ron has retaken the lead. Freddie Rasmussen tucks back in to the slipstream. Can he retake it? And all the while, look at this from Longay. Nearly making contact with Rasmussen. Trying to elbow him off the road. It's a three-way battle for the lead. A race that if it had been drive from the start would have been one long DRS train. Instead, for you all, wherever you are in the world, fireworks from Austria. Fantastic racing. Nicholas Longay wants to get absolutely in the thick of it on these medium tyres. He knows that track position is crucial because towards the end of this race, he will be come under fire on those medium tyres. They're just not as durable as the hards, and that's why a lot of the drivers at the front are on those white walled tyres. Here's Lucas Blakely, the championship leader. We've hardly spoken about him at the moment, but he's currently fifth, lining up Josh Edu. Danny Moreno in ninth, fastest driver on track. He's got something that he had space to race into. Barry Burham under extra lap, the warm up phase, and others around him. Maybe with a tyre that works better at this stage. Break on the curb is the eSports line. Power on as early as you dare. Ron Hart 
swapping the lead all the while with Freddy Rasmussen. Rasmussen, cool as you like, knows when to give up a battle, knows when to fight like crazy, and Longe was so close to absolutely smashing into the side of him. Certainly were. We've got seven different constructors in the top seven, unless I'm mistaken there, which is quite something to behold, and that means that we've got some great racing on our hands. There are no drivers being nice to each other here. They're not working on strategy. Thomas Ronha wants to lead from the front. So does Freddy by the looks of things, although this time around it looks like Rasmussen just settling into the groove again. Doesn't want to use too much battery up because as we've seen so many times in F1 Esports, the last few laps is where it counts. And if you have a lot of battery to deploy and go on the attack, it'll usually be in your favour. Lucas Blakely, though, wants to move up this this train a little bit more from fifth if he wants to be continuing his podium streak this season. And he's got Yano up there right behind him as well, so I wonder whether he's looking ahead or behind. Well, outstanding stuff across the board. If the medium tyre is still the one to be on in a couple of laps, you can see Brendan Lee is putting the pressure on in the Ferrari. He's not afraid to make a move, is he? No. Oh, fantastic move earlier on, hyper-aggressive to the inside when the defensive shape was closing. Ron Hart with a half-second lead as he tries to become our third winner of the season so far. Claim he's maiden victory. Deny Freddie Rasmussen two in a row. He's our most re recent, easy for me to see, uh, race winner from Silverstone. And then Nicholas Longay on the podium at the moment for an Alfa Romeo team winning in the hands of Jano Otmir a few years ago. And looking for a podium today with the Frenchman who opportunistic move made it count when he had the ability to attack. But if anything, he's under a bit more pressure now from the Welshman behind. Longue is looking slightly less aggressive at this stage. As we now take a look at Freddy Rasmussen all over the back of Ronha once again. But look at that, there's no overtake button being used as he go for the move anyway. Look at all the batteries. 100%. He's, he's fully charged. Fully charged and waiting. We're getting to the business end of this race. We're getting to the crucial moment where things will be decided. You have to feel that Ron Haar is really going to go as aggressive as the rules allow him to, using all of the road there. There's, we talked before this started about the risk versus the reward, about which way they would play for the podium or would they go for the win from this position on this lap. He will be desperate to take his first top step. Yeah, absolutely. Ron Hart's not going to just let the, the lead slip out of his grasp uh, lying down. Remember, Rasmussen and Ron Hart were the two that came together in Bahrain. It's true. So Ron Hart does not want to be coming out the worst of those two yet again because that did ruin his race entirely. Didn't score any points in Bahrain and could have easily, easily been on the podium not fourth place but you just know Freddie Rasmussen he's he's done this so many times that is sits in second yeah. keeps his battery in line and then just goes on the attack it was scintillating stuff at the British Grand Prix he drove away at the end he's now going for one of those strategies where he passes probably on the last lap what can Ron Hard do to defend it's uh it's going to be a fascinating one we haven't had to you know oh it's going to be great at the end of the race we've had a great race already yeah. but we've Thoroughly got more enjoyable. to come so Lucas Blakely now, doing all the damage in the middle part of the track, tells you that he is just in a better place with that car. So DRS in the middle part, look at the confidence he's got to throw it in to turn nine. This is the end of the lap. 40% battery though, nowhere near as uh, strong as what Freddy Rasmussen's looking. Well, we spoke about this a little bit in the qualifying show. Well worth your time tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Matt Gallagher hosting that one, uh, looking back at the battle for the lead. We talked about the fact that if you're going to claim a championship, if you're having a bad day, make sure it's a bad day in the top five. He's had to overtake today to get to that top five. It's clearly not the result he would want, but when it's all about damage limitation, it's so important not to make a silly error that makes things worse, and it's still good points for Lucas Blakely for his championship challenge. It absolutely is, and for us, it makes the championship closer, so it's uh, even more exciting. Uh, but. You make a very good point. Damage limitation. Lucas Blake has done a great job up until now. You've got Josh Edu, who's not exactly in the championship hunt at this stage, but scoring some good points if he stays in fourth. But Lucas Blakely, finishing top five is not a disaster. You have to imagine there are going to be off days. The 
top drivers at times, but it's just whoever has the least amount of off days over the course of this 12 race season. Here's Josh Edu as we now look to Barry Burman instead, P8. Had that very tricky phase where he had to go an extra lap on the intermediates. Settled himself down in eighth position, just hasn't worked out for Burman at the start of this uh, season so far. He's got so much pace in that McLaren shadow car, but it's just not quite worked out for him yet because he's a, he's a match for Lucas Blakely most days. Let me go on board with him. You can hear the pit for the DRS. The problem is that everyone else has it and you're looking at pictures of the top three making their way through turn four and into the infield, this circuit used by Formula One in this part of the world since the 60s. And then a fantastic behemoth of a racetrack that it was just a bit too dangerous to be used. So reconfigured in 1997 and then Red Bull made it the Red Bull ring and Formula One returned in 2014. It is always a mainstay due to the close races that we get on the F1 eSports calendar. And Freddie Rasmussen, six tenths of a second, he won't want, he will respond. As soon as it gets any more than that, he will respond using that uh, 100 cent battery. Uh, you know, on board with him, good run now. Are those medium tires about to fade for the Alfa Romeo driving and see he's very, very confident. Ah, oh, and that's a wide moment for the Frenchman ahead. And he'll be gathering himself together. You can see the desperation to get the power down. Longgate trying to cling onto the coattails of the Red Bull driver. Whenever Rasmussen tries to close that gap, that's when Longgate needs to respond. If he drops out of the DRS range, it's going to be a sitting duck. It's like a game of chicken that these drivers are playing. Like Josh Edu looked like he was maybe going to shape up for a move, turns off his battery to then save that. But then Nicholas Longgate quite evidently was using more battery to then extend that gap to make sure that Josh Edu from behind doesn't make a move. But that's just the, the game plan for later on. Right, let's just let's bait Longgate into using 10% battery here, 10% battery there, so that at the end of the race he won't have as much to defend. It's seven tenths of a second out front, and Thomas Ronhart trying to check out nice and early. Josh Edu out of turn one with a brilliant run here. Big chance, even though he's in the DRS train. Is this his moment for the Alpha Tauri driver to reclaim the position that he lost a few laps ago? Shape for the move. Blakely closing in as well. Blakely under pressure from Jano Otmir. And the Mercedes driver getting alongside the reigning champion up against the championship leader, getting the squeeze from the... Oh, look how close that is between the McLaren and the Mercedes. And it's so tight on the exit. Will they make it through? They do. But Jarno Otmir still can't find his way by. Lucas Blakely hasn't been looking ahead for a while now, but he does crucially still have track position. Double world champion versus the championship leader. Fascinating battle to watch that. Lucas Blakely has to be a little bit careful with how much he was squeezing Jarno Otmir there, but I think it was probably just about within the rules. And uh, he settles down there. Just made a small error into turn three, did Lucas. Missed the apex ever so slightly, and Jarno Otmir saw an opportunity. Wasn't able to get through that time, though, and he'll have to try again. P6 for Jarno. Lucas Blakely definitely looking at his mirrors more than ahead. Josh Edu. Surprised he hasn't been able to make a move on Longgate just yet, as uh, we're, it's clear to see those medium tyres are fading. OK, Ron Hart and then Rasmussen, Longgate, Edu, Blakely, and the man very nearly crashing into the back of Blakely. <laughs> it's that, was what, man. that was late. <laughs> that was super late on the brakes, as he very, very nearly found himself in trouble. Freddie Rasmussen, we knew that gap would come down. We know he's got the battery to play with. But when you're up against a driver who's never won in the championship, first opportunity to convert today, dare he wait until the last lap like he would if he was up against a Blakely or an Otmir? Have you got to take into account who you're trying to beat to the win? I don't. I think it's safer for Rasmussen to just do what he does best. Uh, I think if he changes his driving style or the way he's going to overtake because of the fact it's Ron Hart trying to go for his first victory, I'm not sure that's probably the play. These, these drivers have obviously raced each other quite a lot in league racing. And uh, Rasmussen knows how to win races. And I think the best way for him is to go on the attack at, on the final lap. Uh, but we will see. Josh Edu, as you can see there, he is going on the attack, trying to get past Nicholas Longe. He's only got 20% of his battery left. Freddie Rasmussen rocking up to the back of Ronhart. 
And let's have a look. Look at that. He's still got full battery. Give that's, everyone else a chance, Freddy. That's crazy. I expected that to be way down, way down. And yet, he is just doing that all with his own natural talent. Ron Hart driving brilliantly in the wet, now in the dry, fighting, changes for the lead, re-swapping the lead over and over again. Freddy Rasmussen decided to take the P2 and to put the pressure on. He made a decision to do this. He went tactical to do this. What does the young Dutch driver ahead? He's taken a pole position so far this year. What can he do? One podium, one pole, one fastest lap. There's only one column of our stat sheet that needs amending from Thomas Ronard's point of view. And that's victories. He's getting closer. But with all of that battery for Freddy Rasmussen, car placement, braking points, going to be absolutely vital for the young driver out front up against the old master who has won time and time again. He's chasing win number 12. He's looking for his 30th podium in F1 Esports in the Pro Championship. He's biding his time. We're running out of laps, and that is a late move. Barry Burrowman trying to force away by up against Brendan Lee. Yeah, Brendan Lee seems to be struggling as well on those medium yellow tyres. As you can see, he's uh, almost out of DRS, but he's uh, done a, a reasonable next couple of corners. Seven tenths behind Jarno Opmir. But these medium runners have made it work so far. They've got five more laps to hold on. So what will definitely be four tyres crying out <laughs> uh, to be changed. Barry Burrowman, you'd have to say, probably the favourite to try and get through at some point. Uh, we're going to see quite a few different uh, potential moves in the last few laps, that's for sure. Freddie Rasmussen poised and waiting to try and retake it. Thomas Ronha's exit from turn one is going to go a long way to dictating whether he can win this one. How much is he going to defend? Can he defend at this point? He's not bothering. He, no. he's, he is genuinely just getting ready to, to pass. <laughs> That's literally the, all, it, all this is right now. Freddie knows it's probably... Because you've got DRS all the way down to turn three. You've got DRS all the way down here as well. Ronha's best opportunity is using that DRS back down towards this corner, but it's less of a breaking point than turn three. It's, it's, it's going to be interesting. Can Ron Hart survive the first onslaught down towards turn three? If so, then what does he do? This, this is fascinating. Tactically, this is absolutely brilliant. We had a great start to the race. We saw them living on their instincts, trying to gather it together on the intermediate tyres. They made the stop, they switched, it's dried out. You've got such a gaggle of cars behind as well. Longgate trying to keep Josh Edo behind. The Welshman leading ahead of the, uh, of the championship leader who came very close to losing that fifth place to the reigning champion from last year. Is Freddie Rasmussen just going to bide his time and wait until the last lap and dump all of the battery onto the Red Bull ring? And here at Spielberg, is there a chance for the Alpha Tauri in the background? Close but not close enough into the braking zone. It's a very, very entertaining holding pattern at the moment. It is going to come alive in the final laps of the race. Contact definitely possible between the front two. Could that then make Longay versus Edu the battle for the win? And Lucas Blakely and Jarno Otmir are two very, very fast customers in the mix as well. Fine margins at the end. Otmir able to really pressure Blakely in this part of the lap. If you look at the gaps in the background, Freddie Rasmussen's biding his time is the Alpha Tauri driver, formerly of McLaren. Josh Edu doing the same thing as well. Could it all be decided like it was in 2016 here in the real thing on the last lap? How much is Ron Hull willing to risk? That's the question. How much is Bahrain playing on his mind where he didn't score any points after such potential uh, in that first race of the season? Crucially, Longgate oh, just went out of one second and is now going to probably come under fire next lap maybe this lap i think we just about have drs here we go and waiting again you heard the pit for drs waiting once again and this is a choice because he's got all the battery in the world he's in close proximity and he's happy to be in close proximity the rookie driver trying to take his first win in the championship at the top of your picture and on the in the lead on track and the ice cool look the stare of Freddy Rasmussen looking to take win number 12, the master versus the rookie. Let's find out who's going to do this. Remember Tom Deacon's stat from earlier on. 
It's been second and second and second again for Freddy Rasmussen. He must be fed up of it, but he's got a clean move and he's up against a driver who, yes, he's been wheel to wheel with in league racing before. He knows the measure of the driver that he's fighting, but it's different when it's the F1 Esports Pro Championship, penultimate lap of the race. Is this the moment for Freddy Rasmussen to strike? He may well do. He might want to use all of this battery now. There you go. It says disable. We've got a battery deployment on our hands. Cometh the hour, cometh the man. He uses everything he's got to get to the inside. Freddy Rasmussen retakes the lead and he's trying to hang on. Thomas Ronha's not prepared to give this one up. What can he fight back with? And he's got the DRS. Crucially, he's got the DRS. It's going to enable him to stay ahead. It's going to be decided on the last lap. Edo's through on for third as well. Josh Edo has timed it perfectly. He was able to make the move. Thomas Ronha just powered down around the outside and had the DRS to stay ahead. So crucially as well, Ron Hart, it looked like he braked early to make sure he got DRS for that next straight. So Ron Hart playing the mind games. Look at it all behind here. The medium tyres are fading for Nicholas Longe. And here's Otmir, and here's Blakely, and here's Longe, and here's turn nine. And will he roar around the outside and take the position? Oh. Stand back and admire that one. Jano Otmir from the top shelf. What a move, and now he's going to try and do Longe into turn one. And this is the battle for the lead, the best F1 esports race of the year. Extraordinary move from Jano Otmir on the championship leader. He's got Longe as well, and this is the moment for Freddy Rasmussen to try and go all the way around the outside. Can Ron half force him wide? He shows him over the curb. Brilliant racing between the two of them. The man wants his maiden victory. He forced him wide. Ron half shuffled him out. Freddy Rasmussen had all the battery, but he didn't have the momentum. Momentum. He had the DRS, but he couldn't make the pass. And Thomas Ronha, who fought his way through on the opening lap of the race, is a few corners away from victory. Again, absolute masterclass from Ronha. He breaks early, he gets the DRS again, squeezes Rasmussen, which was borderline, but just about OK. Here's Jano Watmir, who's right behind Edu. Phenomenal driving all the way through. Jano Otmir with some brilliant passes. Freddy Rasmussen with some great pace. But the man at the flag first for the first time, Thomas Ronhar across the line to become a winner in F1 Esports. A drive of sheer class. And Thomas Ronhar can say that he's done it. He's our third winner of the year. It's his maiden victory. You just watched a Haas win. And the reason why, Thomas Ronhar. Incredible, absolutely incredible stuff there. Thomas Ronhart, what a drive. To think he has never won, never won a race. And to beat Freddy Rasmussen, of all people, who knew all the tactics. Absolutely outstanding. The race of the year, Tom Deacon, analyze that. <laughs> Break that down. I would love to, Alex. Uh, brilliant work from Alex and Matt Gallagher. Nick, that race had everything. The fact that Haas have their maiden uh, win is phenomenal. It's happened. Uh, we were there to witness it. What an incredible race from Thomas. Yeah, what did I say? Once Thomas Ronhart fi figures out what he does in the race in terms of race craft and, and strategy, He's going to be hard to beat, and wow, he did a fantastic job. I'll tell you what we'll do, Nick. Uh, everyone, let's <laughs> gather your breath. Let's <laughs> gather your thoughts. We'll have a quick break. When we come back, we will break down everything that just happened in that fantastic Austrian Grand Prix. I feel honoured. It's uh, such a big competition. I was always watching Formula One ever since I was a child. So to be in eSports is a big honour for me. Getting to this level I am on at the moment took me years of hard work and dedication. It's the top series in the world. So there's a lot of pressure involved. Well, you have the expectations of the F1 team that you're representing. Um, so you got, there's lots to deal with to be part of was it 30 drivers at, at the right at the top of the game was always, always my goal. So, yeah, it just feels amazing. It's definitely an intense feeling and uh, you just don't want to make a mistake. So, yeah, it's just, I would say it's intense. It's a big honor to be racing in an official F1 championship. It's, you can feel the amount of eyes that are on, 
on the series and, and, the, and obviously the pressure is there it feels feels good but also you know you're a little bit nervous obviously before each race and each qualifying but it is a big definitely a big positive the positive outweigh the negatives by a lot you're racing against basically the top team drivers in the world and the competition level is like the top highest one there's literally no sim racing competition more difficult than that amazing privileged and yeah quite good to be a driver in the f1 esports championship is very uh, draining you need to put in a lot of work to get to this level has taken many years many hours i think i started in 2014 and got in f1 esports 2018 it took a lot many sacrifices to get here countless hours of uh, just trying to improve and become the best. Sticking to schedules, practicing six hours plus per day is a sacrifice, but it's what you have to do if you want to be at the top. With all the top quality drivers, it's going to be something pretty surreal. There's people I've looked up to in there, and it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be an amazing experience for sure. A very tough ordeal. It's super competitive, but generally very fun and uh, clean racing. To say you're one of the best in the world, you're competing against the best in the world. That's for me the, the main thing. I always want to compete in the championship where the best drivers are there. It's, it, there's no fun racing against people that you know aren't the best. It's, it's a really big challenge, but I think the bigger the challenge, the better the reward at the end or the feeling of satisfaction and pride at the end. The pressure is extremely high, but the adrenaline keeps fueling us to pushing forward and charging on in the championship. Welcome back to the F1 Pro Championship where we have just seen Thomas Rona win at Spielberg. It's event two. We start at Spielberg. Then we move to Spa, Francorchamps, and then we move to the Netherlands for Zandvoort. But what a way to start event two. 36 of the best laps. It started in the lashing rain and it ended in the dry. And that guy, well, there's not a dry eye in the house finally has get their maiden victory and you can see what it means uh, to Thomas. I, I watched the whole race with Nick. We were sat down here at the desk in the beautiful Gfinity Arena, uh, brilliantly commentated by Alex Jakes and Matt Gallagher. Uh, at some point, the old master battling the young uh, Jedi, <laughs> it felt at times. But Thomas Renard just had that craft and, and the composure to just break a little bit and get that DRS. There was many moments like that that just gave him his first win. Yeah, that was what won him the race. Um, obviously, Freddie saved all of his battery um, for the final two laps. Uh, it was like 100% unbelievable. And uh, I, I was watching and I was thinking, Thomas, why haven't you defended? Why haven't you defended? He didn't even move to the inside uh, before turn three and uh, broke a little bit early and had DRS. And that was his first moment of being able to defend against uh, Freddie. Um, and then when it came to like the last lap, you know, second chance from Freddie and the final chance, uh, it almost looked like uh, Thomas had his number. So uh, yeah, an amazing, an amazing job. Um, and this is it, yeah. So this is actually the final, this is the final lap. And this is when Thomas actually did go defensive. And I thought, yeah, definitely don't give him any room on exit. And Thomas still had DRS as well. Um, so yeah, incredible, incredible work from Thomas Ron Hart. And as I said, once he knows what to do in the races, he's going to be tough to beat. He is a serious contender now that you see it again. More celebration. And uh, you just love to see it. You know, they're, they're the, they were the underdogs coming into this season. No one knew what to expect of Thomas uh, Ron Hart. He won the pro exhibition. But whether you can compete with the guys that he's, for the last couple of years, watched, uh, in the F1 Esports Pro Championship, and now to compete with him. The, fe the, the, the feeling he must have had, knowing Freddy Rasmussen is right behind, and you Josh Edo right up there, Jano Otmir, fantastic overtake on Lucas Blakely and Nicholas Longay to get up into four and keep his driver's championship alive. I mean, w would he have known, Nick, how much battery uh, Freddy Rasmussen would have had? He, he had no idea, it was, it's guesswork, it was like cat and mouse at times. It was no. a game of chess. No, he has his team. He has his team behind him. Okay. He'll know absolutely everything of what's going on with Freddie Rasmussen. They'll be they'll be looking at the uh, the TV feed um, and seeing that Freddie is uh, saving.
giving all of his battery mounting an attack uh, for the final couple of laps. So he would have definitely got that over the radio. Um, but then it's another thing being able to actually do it and defend against someone like Freddie, who is so, so well versed okay. when it comes to F1 esports. Yeah, well versed, showing that craft. Uh, it had a bit of everything. I know that it's going to take longer than the, the 10 minutes that we have to, to break down everything. We will, of course, be back tomorrow for Spa Frankenstein. But let's just confirm the DHL fastest lap. Uh, it's Philip Pejnaida, um, obviously, coming in very early to change off the intermediates. I think that was back in um, uh, lap 14. So just going for something, trying to get that fastest lap. He's done that. However, uh, who is the Ramco driver of the day? Well, to give us that answer. Matt Gallagher. I think that's how we're referring to you from now on. That's what Alex Jake says. Uh, Matt, Matt Gallagher, uh, who is the Ramco driver of the day? It is, of course, Thomas Ronha. How can it be anybody else? What a performance from the Haas driver to take their first ever victory in F1 eSports. He drove brilliantly. There was so much composure uh, uh, just throughout the entire race, uh, but especially at the end. Of course, lap one. He was fighting Freddie Rasmussen. Rasmussen goes off the track, allows Ron Hart to take the lead. They then change a few times over the course of the race. But even then, it's just a statement of intent from Ron Hart to, to take the lead and to, to really just settle into the race in a place that he, he wants to be, right? We spoke to Roman Grosjean earlier and he was saying, I hope we sort out the starts. Well, yeah, he did. He ticked that off his notepad and it was uh, brilliant to see from Ron Harder. Then fighting in the middle of the race, they both pit on the same lap uh, from the inters to the hard tyres. Freddie, of course, took the lead, but Ron Hart was like, no, no, I'm going to lead from the front and uh, you're just going to slot in behind. Longay was looking very quick as well at this stage of the race. But Ron Hart just kept absolutely out of any sort of uh, problems. He allowed Rasmussen to go up the inside. But this was where it was beautiful. This was where he allowed for Rasmussen to go up the inside and took the DRS away from him. That DRS is wide open for Ron Hart and he manages to sweep back through. Again here, he doesn't mind Rasmussen taking the lead into turn three because as you saw on the line on the track, he then gets DRS again. The little squeeze is beautiful. It's a killer instinct from Ron Hart to just put Rasmussen slightly off balance and then he used the DRS to just stretch away. And what an amazing reaction as well from Ron Hart. So, yeah, an absolutely brilliant drive as... Uh, just look at that. He's going to look to us again, I think, and he just can't believe... Yeah, yeah, straight down the camera, <laughs> fist pump. Beautiful stuff, eh? Yes, please. Uh, Matt, uh, you are a true professional. I've been moved all around you in all the different standing <laughs> positions, but he's a professional. Uh, still commentating it, what a race it was. I mean, it must have been special. Once it got going towards the end, once we were looking at Rasmussen, how much battery he could still deploy, and Thomas Runner, it was just fantastic to watch. It was, it was amazing, you know, the fact that he just didn't, wasn't really phased of Rasmussen being behind him the whole time and still managed to, to pull it off at the end was, was miraculous. Um, still, uh, another podium for Freddie that takes him to 30 in his F1 eSports career. However, he still stays on 11 race wins because this man we're about to talk to right now, Thomas Rana, all the way where you are there celebrating. I'm going to do that to you. I don't know if you can see me, but that's what it means to get that maiden <laughs> win. Thomas, what's going through your head right now? Yeah, to get my most ever win is I have absolutely no words. Um, it still needs to sink in a little bit, but to get my first win, I think those kind of battles with uh, Freddie, yeah, I have, I have no words. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what? This reminds me of the uh, pro exhibition when I asked you what does it mean to win this, and you said. I have no words. Uh, you better get used to this, yeah. Thomas. <laughs> um, to be honest with you, what is the secret behind your season so far? You've just, you know, come straight out of the traps. You are, you've got the speed, you've got the race craft now. Uh, how, how are you doing so well this year? Well, obviously, practice makes perfect. So I'm um, putting as much effort as I can in the sim to, uh, you know, get uh, as fast as I can. And, uh, yeah, it's been working well so far. And, you know, helping my team as well. Of course, Matthias had an unlucky race today. But, uh, yeah, even uh, his reaction after the race was uh, absolutely amazing. So, uh, yeah, it's been uh, very good so far. Uh, Thomas, Matt here, congratulations on the win. I just want to talk through those last two laps. Were you trying to get DRS? Was there a little bit of a breaking early, especially on the penultimate lap, to uh, ensure you could get back through? It looks like I've got my answer already. Talk me through those last few laps. Yeah, it's, uh, it was always a plan to you know, break because um, I think lap 35, the penultimate lap, he, he also tried to break before the DRS line, and I saw that. So what I did, I broke a little bit harder to go around the outside and get the DRS to uh, launch myself uh, into turn four and uh, stay in the lead uh, for the final lap. 
and basically I did the same for the last lap, but then the other way around. I tried to defend and uh, still get the DRS, which uh, worked well, I must say, and uh, put a little squeeze on uh, turn three exit, but I think that was all fair. So, uh, yeah, really happy. Hey, Thomas, uh, rest up. D are you going to race in Spa tomorrow? I hope so, uh, with this current form. Absolutely, I will. Uh, <laughs> the smile's there. Listen, you I rest will. up. We'll catch you tomorrow. Best of luck uh, for that race. Uh, there you go, Thomas Runner. Uh, incredible stuff uh, from him. Um, and just just out of words. Doesn't know how to sum it up, but he will do. He better get used to it, as I said. He better, yeah. Okay, uh, Arina Bravo is down at Red Bull. Uh, it's now four times he's finished second at Spielberg. He must be happy with it, but um, Ariana, uh, best of luck. Uh, how's uh, Freddie feeling? Well, let's hear from him himself. Freddie, P2, how are you feeling after that? For us, I don't know about you guys in the studio, I was on the edge of my seat, but what was it like for you? Uh, I'm pretty disappointed with that. Um, I had a rare mistake on lap one, which probably ended up costing me the race in the end. Um, I tried to overtake on the last lap, but it didn't work out. He played it well with the DRS, so well done to him. I know that it's not the result that you would have wanted, especially considering you started on pole, but how enjoyable is it to actually have those battles on track and to be able to go wheel to wheel with your competitors? Honestly, it's not very enjoyable, but <laughs> yeah, the racing is not very clean, but it's all right. It's fun. OK, and reflecting on the day as a whole then, as I said, started strong with the pole position. Are you able to take away some positives from this day at least? Yeah, for sure. I think our pace is better than uh, the first event. So we'll just have to keep working at that and get some more poles and hopefully some wins. You have lots of experience behind you, so I have no doubt that that will be coming your way very, very soon. But looking ahead now to the next couple of races that we have coming up for event two, how are you feeling? How are you and the team going to regroup so that you can come back stronger? Um, we have two more races tomorrow. So, or not tomorrow, but this week. And then we're going to go back home, work at it, practice a lot more, um, and then come back and do it all again. Thank you so much. And no, it's not the result you wanted, but congratulations. It's still another podium, which is impressive. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to swap you out now for Josh, who's had a very solid day as well. Congratulations on the podium. How do you feel? Um, yeah, I'm delighted. I'm over the moon, especially since last event. Um, the pace was terrible. Um, the performance was terrible. Really not what I thought I could do. Um, confidence was low. So to come back here in event two now and show that I can be at the front. Um, yeah, really happy. Yeah, you definitely proved yourself today, so congratulations. How did you rebuild that confidence? You said it was low coming into this. What have you and the team been working on in order to build yourself back up because you put on a show there? Um, yeah, honestly, my teammates are incredibly supportive. Uh, I was feeling pretty down after that day or after the event was finished, um, but we got straight back to practice as soon as we got home, um, improved on the pace and just showed up with a positive mentality. And, that's what did it, I think. Oh, that's so lovely to hear. Well, congratulations once again. Fantastic performance from you. Thank you so much for joining us to chat as well. Guys, there you have it, the rest of your podium chatting with us live from Red Bull. But now, back to you guys in the studio. Oh, thank you very much, Ariana. Bravo. Uh, brilliant work down at Red Bull. Uh, I did say good luck for that interview with Freddie. I, I knew he wouldn't be the happiest of drivers, but uh, a consummate professional there to... to understand what's going through his head right now. And to hear Josh Edo back in the confidence, he picked up one point in Bahrain, not in the points uh, for Imola, but now here it is, fourth place finish for him. Uh, as, um, as you see just down there. Um, listen, right, uh, those are not the uh, championship points. Those that was were, before the race. Yeah, that was before. Lucas Blakely, he'll have to have some more points added in for him. I'm currently swapping places <laughs> with Alex Jakes and Nick Hamilton to come and join me because it, we are getting close to the end of this uh, show, this event. It was brilliant around Spielberg. Uh, not an easy job there chatting to Freddie. He did not seem happy. I shouldn't have mentioned the fact that's the fourth time he's finished second at Spielberg. Uh, that stat of yours, I'm yeah. not saying that's what cursed him, but that's what a lot of people are saying. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Nick, uh, great to hear from uh, Josh. You, he stood up for you in quali. Uh, and there, just getting that confidence again. Uh, I'm expecting him to do very well if he races tomorrow in Spa. Yeah, now obviously his confidence is high. I mean, when it's low, you know, it can definitely keep going low. But uh, he showed that he can get out of those tough times and um, show that he can run at the front. So I'm really proud of him for it.
All right, gentlemen, uh, Thomas Renner, driver of the day. He seemed very happy. Matt, uh, can he keep this momentum going when he heads to Spa? Yeah, I think he's looking like a very ominous prospect for the rest of the drivers, so uh, bring it on. All right, well, listen, Matt, thank you very much. Alex Jakes, uh, to Nick Hamilton, thank you very much. Uh, that is almost up uh, the time up for this evening, but the races just keep on coming. We are back tomorrow night for the next instalment of this championship at Spa. Frankersham, is there anything else going on tomorrow? Yeah, of course there is. Make sure to join Matt for the quality show at 3.30 p.m. And then we are back here at 7.30 p.m. for the race itself. Right then, thank you very much to everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we'll catch you back here for tomorrow.